Hey everybody, I wanted to give you a rundown of a new board that I'm using on a upcoming hobby project. This board is based around a chip called the ESP8266. This is a Wi-Fi enabled uh, microcontroller. Um, a lot of people use this chip as a Wi-Fi transmitter and hook it up to an Arduino. I wanted to show you this board um, because you can actually accomplish a lot of projects just with this uh, board and chip alone without any Arduino. So this board is it's called the the thing development board from SparkFun. So it's what it is is um, it's based around the ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip, but it also includes um, some kind of user-friendly features that make it pretty easy to use in hobby projects. This board costs $16, and first I'll run through some of the hardware on the board here. So up here you see a USB connection, so you can use this to power the board. The chip itself, it runs off of 3.3 volts, but it has a regulator built into the board, so you can supply it with uh, the 5 volt power over USB, or also these connections up here, you can solder on some different types of power connectors and supply approximately 5 volts to power the board as well that way. The USB connection is also your interface for programming the chip and also for debugging your program. You can output uh, like debug serial messages that you'll see on your screen. All the programming is done through the Arduino IDE application and it was really easy to set up. You just download a, a, a board manager for this this chip and uh, this spark fun thing development board is one of the boards that you can uh, select in your configuration uh, and all, all this uh, USB programming and debugging it's done through a FTDI to a USB to serial chip that's built into the board uh, I'm not sure which one it is probably this one here but doesn't really matter. Um, the other nice features on the board, on both sides of the board, it has all the I.O. pins broken out. So you have a bunch of GPIO pins. Uh, how many depends exactly on your application uh, because some of the GPIO pins serve either as GPIO or as an I squared C or SPI interface. Um, so if you had some I squared C or SPI based uh, sensors that you wanted to interface with, you can do that from this board, or you can just do simple digital IOs, GPIOs. It also has one analog input channel. Uh, I think it's a zero to one volt analog input and it has one LED built into the board that's tied to one of the GPIO channels so that's kind of handy for for debugging. You can flash the LED and whatnot. Um, the chip has a EEPROM that you can read and write from in your application which comes in handy sometimes and it has a feature uh, of a deep sleep mode and um, it's supposed to only draw 10 microamps of current in deep sleep mode, so that's really nice for, uh, say, battery-powered remote sensor type applications. Um, the couple of tricks uh, with this board related to the deep sleep here, we have uh, uh, like two contacts for the power LED on the board. The power LED, it 
draws like seven milliamps of current. So if you actually want to achieve the 10 microamp deep sleep mode, you're supposed to cut the trace between uh, these two points, I guess, to disable the power LED. And the other thing related to deep sleep mode is here there's a couple of through holes and these need to be jumpered to enable uh, waking up from sleep which is no problem really but the gotcha is that it needs to be a removable jumper because to be able to program reprogram the board uh, that jumper needs to be removed uh, I guess another feature of the board is it has a built-in uh, PCB trace that functions as a Wi-Fi antenna or you can optionally uh, solder in this connector here to connect uh, an actual antenna to the board. So overall um, I'm pretty well along in my debugging of my first project with this board and it seems quite handy and quite useful and I would uh, definitely recommend uh, using this board for any simple Wi-Fi connection, uh, Wi-Fi connected Internet of Things type application that you might be working on that just has a maybe a handful of sensors you want to read from, send some data to the cloud. It, it seems quite easy to set up and uh, yeah, it seems quite good so far. Uh, in my next video, I'll hopefully hopefully give a demo of my application working and sending some data to the cloud. And I forget if I mentioned yet, this board was $16 US. Okay, that's all for now.